Hello and welcome to Concat vs. TextJoin. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here, let's just jump right in. Now this is one of my battle series videos, and in these videos we put two functions in a head-to-head -head competition, and in this video we're gonna put these two challengers, Concat and TextJoin, in a three-round main event for the evening. Now before we head to XL, let me know in the comments who do you think's better, Concat or TextJoin? Ladies and gentlemen, to my left wearing red trunks, the offspring of the world famous concatenate function, CONCAT! And wearing blue trunks, the challenger, the new kid on the block, text join! Let's get ready to rumble! Round one. Now, in our first round, we want these functions to combine this line column with this part column to get a format that looks like our example. So both of these functions combine text values or cell values to create one combined text string. So first let's do it with concat, equals concat. All right, the argument here is text, and basically what we're doing is we're providing the cell or range reference to the cells we wanna combine. In this case, we're just gonna point it to these two cells, close function and enter. And now we can simply fill this formula down and we got it. Now let's do the same thing with text join. Equals text join. Our first argument here is called delimiter. What's that? That is a character that we can optionally place in between the cells. In this case, we don't want any separator or any delimiter. So I'm just going to hit a comma to move to the next argument. The next argument is ignore empty. What is that? We're going to talk about in an upcoming round. So for now, we're just going to hit comma and skip that. Now we get our argument called text. This is where we simply refer to the cell or range of cells that we want to combine. Close the function and enter. We can go ahead and fill this down and we got it. Okay, so who won round one? I don't know, they both accomplished the same task. I would probably use concat just because it's cleaner, there's no additional arguments. So in practice, I might go with concat. Round two. Now in this round, we want to combine department, account, and subaccount, but we want it in this format. We want to use a colon in between each of these components. So let's try it with concat. Equals concat. So can I just give it this range? and hit enter? No, because there's no delimiter. So how would we do it with concat? Well, equals concat. Now we'd have to define each argument individually. So we'd have to say we want to combine this cell and then a comma with the colon delimiter and then we want to combine this and then another colon delimiter and then we want to combine this close function and enter. And now we can fill this formula down. Now let's do the same thing with text join. Equals text join. And what is the delimiter that we want to put in between these cells? Oh, interesting. Okay. We just define it once, right? And then comma and then ignore empty. Do we want to ignore empty? Do we want to include empty? There are no empty cells, so in this case it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to hit a comma and then we simply point it to our range. So in this case, we can just simplify this and point it to the entire range, close the function and enter. And now we get the same result. We can fill this down and we got it. So who won this round? In practice, I would probably go with text join. With concat, we have to define the cell reference with the delimiter, with another cell reference, with another delimiter, and then the cell reference. And in text join, we just define the delimiter once. So in practice, I'm probably gonna go with text join. So therefore, I'm basically gonna say that for round two, it's text join. Round three. All right, in this round, we wanna combine the last name and first name column and we wanna get it into the format like our example. So let's try it with concat, equals concat. All right, I need a delimiter, so I'm back to defining the cell references individually. So I wanna combine this, comma, and now I have to define the delimiter, which in this case is a comma space, and I have to enclose that in quotes, and then we have our next cell reference. Close the function and enter. So we got it. Let's go ahead and fill this down and okay, interesting. So now it looks like we have extra commas when there are empty cells, right? Like in this case, we don't want bridges comma or comma Francis. So let's take a look at text join equals text join. All right, what's the delimiter? Okay, the delimiter 
is a comma space, and again, we have to enclose that in quotes. And now we get this ignore empty argument. So true, ignore empty cells. False, include empty cells. Hmm, interesting. For the moment, let's try false, which says include empty cells. And then we define our range, which is this. Close function and enter. So same result as concat. Now let's fill this down. All right, so this provides the same results as concat and it includes those extra commas that we don't want. So let's try it again. Equals text join. The delimiter is gonna be a comma space, enclosed in quotes. This time, let's use true, ignore empty cells. And now let's grab this range, close the function, and enter. Now let's go ahead and fill this down. <laughs> okay, interesting. All right, let's take a look at the second argument, ignore empty. If this is true, it means we want to ignore empty cells, which means we do not want to include the empty cell and we do not want to include the corresponding delimiter. If, however, we say false, it means we want to include empty cells and therefore we want to include the extra delimiters. Now, I also wanna let you know one more thing. Equals text join. All right, so we want the delimiter, which is the comma space. If I leave this second argument out, okay, meaning it's an optional argument and I don't have to specify it, if I do not specify, it defaults to true, which makes sense, right? So in other words, if I leave it out and I don't specify it and I fill this down, it's going to automatically default to true, which is I want to ignore empty cells, which means I don't want to include the empty cells or the corresponding delimiters. So who wins round three? In practice, I'm gonna go with text join. So to wrap up, okay, we do these battle series videos not really to decide which function is better because after all, it really depends on the project and the kind of data that you're working with. But I do these battle series videos really to point out their differences because I feel like once you really understand the differences, you're better informed to decide which one to use in any given workbook, okay? so. Now that you've seen the differences, which one do you think you're more likely to use in practice? Concat or text join? Let me know by posting a comment below. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University. 